In March, Saskatchewan's new Democratic Party will have a new leader. Party members will choose between Ryan Miley and Trent Witherspoon. Ryan Miley is a medical doctor and has been involved in advocating for social policy changes for over 20 years. Miley is also no stranger to the leadership race. This is his third time that he has taken a run at being the leader of the Saskatchewan NDP. Ryan Miley joins us now in our Saskatoon studio. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Jill. A lot of people would have quit after a couple of leadership losses. What makes you think this one will be successful? Well, uh, I, I do think persistence is a value. Uh, I uh, actually took me three times to get into medical school, and, and that worked out okay. Sometimes you just have to keep trying when something's important. What seems to be different about this time around is being an elected member of the legislature has taken away any questions that people had about whether or not I'd succeed in that format. And uh, I think the other thing is that there's maybe a bit more of a recognition among party members. There really is time for us to change, time for us to be a bit more bold in the types of ideas that we're putting forward. And how do you consider yourself to be the better person to take on that change in leadership as opposed to Trent Witherspoon? What I'm really hearing from the membership is that there is that desire for a new approach and that for too long our way of approaching elections has been to criticize the Sask party as much as we do have to point out the flaws there but we have been reluctant to be really clear about what kind of things we're wanting to achieve and coming from where I do coming as a, a family physician and from the work I've done with Upstream and writing the Healthy Society book there's a, a set of ideas and an approach that focuses on the health and well-being of the people of the province as the primary goal and the types of investments, types of choices we can make at government level that can allow us to achieve that best health that really opens up space for some ideas that maybe haven't been on the table before and can give us an opportunity to do what I think we need to do, which is excite and inspire people if we want to be winning the next election and achieving what really matters. Can you give me some specifics about what some of those types of things you want to do differently and put more focus on? What, what are those things? Absolutely. One of the pieces that I worked on prior to uh, being elected was a poverty reduction strategy. Gave some advice to the provincial government on what that could look like. They chose not to, they chose to shelve that report, but the information is still there. And we know that poverty is costing us nearly $4 billion a year to our economy. If we have a good poverty reduction strategy, we can grow the economy as well as improve the lives and health of so many people. Another piece that is clearly missing in our healthcare system is pharmacare. Too many people are having to choose between paying the rent or paying for the medications that they need to stay healthy. I, I see that all the time in my practice. We should have a national pharmacare program and we'll continue to push for that. But until we're there, Saskatchewan may once again have to take the lead to save money because we're paying too much for drugs, but also to improve people's health. How do you plan to win more support in rural Saskatchewan? Yeah. So I, something you might not know, I actually am from rural Saskatchewan. I grew up on a farm southwest of Moose Jaw. And certainly what I'm hearing when I'm out in where I grew up and around the province, there's a sense that the NDP had lost touch with rural Saskatchewan. But there's also a growing sense that the Sask Party is taking rural Saskatchewan for granted. Decisions like the attempt to uh, cut libraries, the decision to get rid of STC. There's many things that suggest that there's not the same attention to the quality of lives of people in rural Saskatchewan that there should be, which is, isn't the kind of opportunity we want. We want life to be good in rural Saskatchewan, but it, it offers us an opening to start communicating about, listening to what are the real issues on the minds of people outside of the larger cities and reflecting those concerns in our platform. It's almost as though we've been a bit shy to talk about rural issues, where I think there's a lot of support, a lot of smart ideas in rural Saskatchewan about how to improve conditions. We need to be a part of that conversation front and center. When it comes to climate change, what would a climate change plan look like if you eventually formed government? You know, the type of climate change plan that I would put in place would be effective at reducing carbon emissions, including uh, also other greenhouse gases like getting rid of the methane emissions which are a major greenhouse gas we need to decrease our contribution to greenhouse gases extremely important we're seeing the way in which climate change is already affecting farming communities already affecting water uh, and it's 
its management around the province. There's so much we need to do. There's also an enormous opportunity here to create new jobs in renewable energy. Saskatchewan has the most wind, the best sun of anywhere in, in, the, in the country. We should be leaders in renewable energy, but instead we've been holding back. We haven't been making the, the kinds of investments and, and taking the kinds of decisions that would allow us to produce electricity everywhere on the, in the province, farms, on reserves, in small towns. We need a plan that shifts us in that direction at the same time as making sure that whatever mechanisms we use, they don't make life less affordable, they don't get in the way of Saskatchewan businesses being able to succeed, of people having the employment opportunities they need. There's a great opportunity here. We need to address it with courage instead of pretending it's not happening. You've been following the news headlines in the last week around the Gerald Stanley trial and there's been calls in the last few days for justice reform. There's a lot of angst being expressed over what has transpired. I'm interested to know a little bit more about what reconciliation looks like to you in Saskatchewan. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of talk about reconciliation and, and good talk. You know, we talk about, I'm sitting today on Treaty 6 territory, homeland of the Métis. That's starting to become part of our regular language. That's really valuable, but that talk has to lead into action. And this week, that word reconciliation is feeling a lot more hollow for a lot of Métis and First Nations people around the province. If we're going to be serious about reconciliation, we need to be serious about closing the gap in education, in health, in economic outcomes. 60% of kids living on reserve are living in poverty. High rates of HIV, of diabetes, of other illnesses among First Nations people, an over-representation of Indigenous people within our justice system. These are all parts of the, the challenges we face by saying we're not just going to talk about reconciliation, we're going to work together with First Nations leadership and communities and the federal government to design the outcomes, to talk about what are the outcomes we want in health, education, economics, etc. And then each year come forward, and I as Premier will each year come forward and give a closing the gap speech telling us how far we've come and commit to going further and further until we really do live in an equal province. Ryan Miley, thanks for your time today. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Ryan Miley is running to be the next leader of the Saskatchewan New Democrats.